95% of business owners today earn less than $50,000 a year. On today's show, we're going to be discussing some of the reasons why, and we'll be looking in on a rare interview I had with sales legend Brian Tracy. Uh, Brian is an international speaker, one of the country's top business leaders, and has authored more than 50 books. Uh, we'll be discussing things that we can do in our business and personal life to be gaining more success. If you feel like you're not living your life at your peak potential, you will not want to miss one minute of this episode. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We have an amazing show. Welcome to our show. Welcome. You know, it's a great honor for me to be sitting down and interviewing Brian Tracy, which we'll be looking in on in a minute. Uh, Brian has actually been a very important uh, fixture in my life for many years. In fact, uh, at a very young age, I had some great advice. Uh, somebody told me to start self-educating myself. And one of the people that I turned to at 18 or 19 years of age was Brian Tracy. I literally devoured anything I could get my hands on uh, from Brian, and I owe him much of my success. So without further ado, let's take a look at a rare interview that we had. I'm here with my, uh, one of my mentors, I can actually say. I grew up reading. Brian Tracy is here today. And um, Brian, let me ask you, obviously you've been out there for many years. I know you've authored over 50 books. So you've spoken in over 61 countries. Uh, you've certainly done it all. But uh, as you know, the, for the entrepreneur, it takes a certain mindset to be able to accomplish uh, what you've done. Uh, was there an aha moment where you said, you know, uh, now I know the path I'm supposed to take or, you know, I know I'm supposed to empower people. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, it's very much like cooking a dish in the kitchen. There's many ingredients. There's not just one. And all the ingredients have to go together. And so what we have found, the most important single ingredient for business success is that you have an excellent product or service to start with. And you're constantly looking for ways to make that product or service better for your customers. If that's the central focus of your business, whether it's an Apple or an IBM or a Mercedes-Benz, then you're going to be successful. And if that's not the central focus of your business, then you will not be. Right. And in, for, in terms of uh, personal development, what do you feel like the, maybe one of the, I think I know the answer because I was listening to your seminar moments ago, but what do you feel like one of the, your main uh, focus has been or your main uh, key has been to, to your success? Well, the, the most important word in business success is the word ask. You have to ask customers to buy. You have to ask for appointments. You have to ask for credit. You have to ask for business loans. Is you have to ask. But the, the joke that we say is <clears throat> the role of the small business owner is to ask people for money. Give me your money. And give them a good reason for them to give you their money. And this is your job. And if you're not asking people for money, you're not working. We say social networking is social not working. Is playing on the computer, working on the internet, is not asking people for money. The only thing that's asking people for money is getting face to face, head to head, knee to knee, showing people that your product or service can really help them and asking them to buy it. I, I was listening uh, out when you were speaking and you had mentioned uh, that uh, the key to, that you thought was really uh, focus, that yes. many people were lacking focus. And I mentioned to you a few minutes before we did the interview, I had the privilege of, of talking to Donald Trump last year and I asked him uh, what his one key factor was to his success and he said the same thing and you had referenced even Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, they say the same thing. So certainly it's something that all of you have figured out, but I, I was surprised at some of the statistics of, of uh, the earnings of this country due to a lack of focus. Yes, and <clears throat> the people are doing too many things during the day that are not generating revenue. So if you ask, what is the purpose of a business? Well, the purpose of a business is to create customers, right. is to make sales, all right? So that if you're not creating customers and making sales, you're really not in business. You're made, you, you may be entertaining yourself, but you're not in business. And so we say the first 90 minutes of every day, you should spend on either revenue generation or wealth creating wealth a a um, uh, adding activities. If you're not spending the first 90 minutes on revenue generation or value creation, then start doing it. And then take a break and spend the next 90 minutes on revenue generation and wealth creation. And get into the habit of spending all of your time and the time of your most talented people on focusing on customers. Peter Drucker said there are no results inside the business. The results are outside the business where the customers are. 
Right. And everything else is preparation and warm up and warm down. Work, yeah. And people say, what about all this paperwork? Do it before customers are available to be seen and after customers uh, are available to be seen. But when customers are available during the working day, you should spend 80 to 90 percent of your time talking to customers. That's right. And the old 80-20 <coughs> rule uh, comes into play. And, and it seemed, you mentioned you know, focusing on uh, one thing and not having all these balls in the air, so to speak. And it seems like as you have a little bit more success, that's when more people are approaching you with dangling carrots and opportunities. Yes. And in the beginning, it's, it's a little bit overwhelming to uh, not, you know, you find yourself not taking your own advice and you have 15 things you're doing. Yes. So obviously it's, it's easier said than done. It's a big problem that we all struggle with. Natural tendency of entrepreneurs is to expand and try to do many, many little things that have little value. At a certain point, you have to stop and say, wait a minute, there's only three things that I do that generate revenue. And we call this the law of three, which we talked about in this program. You've got to figure out what are the three most important things I do and do only those things. Have three goals each day and work only on those goals. Ask yourself, make a list of everything you have to do during the day and ask yourself, if I could only do one thing on this list before I was called out of town for a month, which one activity would generate the most revenues or bring me the most success? And do only that until it's done. Yeah, and I picked up in your talk, I was taking notes in fact, when they, when they wanted to come back here, I said, well, he's almost done. Let me just finish. But uh, I, I know that even to this day, when you talk to different corporations, there's a couple of exercises that you put them through, uh, sometimes even uncomfortable, and you had told them to, to, to make a list of everything they wanted to get done. And then the second thing that's a little bit more personal is what would, to get all those things done, what would you have to do this year? And that's when we kind of look at ourselves and yes. see the holes. Well, you, you always start with idealization. If my business was perfect, what would it look like? And the greater clarity you have with regard to that at this time, uh, the faster you'll achieve it. Then the second step is what would I have to do starting today to create that ideal business? What would be the most important thing? What would be the second most important thing? And then take action. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, um, obviously, like I mentioned, you had, you've written numerous books. I think we've spoken. You're currently just got done with five and you're working on a few more. This is a busy year. I'll, do, I'll publish at least eight books in this year. Unbelievable. Well, I know you're, you're going strong. Uh, talk a little bit about your mentors coming up. As I said, to, uh, when I came into to business very young, around 18, I was mass recruited by a sales company. They put me in a room and they said, look, you know, the turnover here is about two weeks. And uh, if you can make it a year, you'll probably have seniority to have an office, but no one makes it a year. And I really struggled for the first several weeks. And somebody literally pulled me aside and said, listen, man, you got to get some education. And he says, uh, there's a guy named Brian Tracy and Zig Ziglar. And he says, buy anything you can find on these guys. And if you don't, you're dead. He, he actually said, you're going to die of you. And um, I, I didn't take the advice, I don't think, at the moment. And I, I was on the verge of getting evicted. I was, it was just that young struggle. And I took his advice. I bought everything I could handle. And... Uh, you know, you were the ones that, but I, when I want, we're going to take a quick break. I want to come back. I want to talk a little bit about uh, your mentors, who inspired you to have that mind shift to accomplish everything that you've done. Uh, more with Brian Tracy in a minute. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I hope you've been enjoying our interview with Brian Tracy. And those of you out there that haven't had a chance to see Brian in action, we're going to show you a couple of minutes of what you've been missing. Now, there was a did a discussion with three gentlemen recently, Bill Gates Jr., the second, third richest man in the world, Bill Gates Sr., his father, and Warren Buffett. And they were at dinner, and somebody came up to them and asked, you gentlemen are very successful. What is the key to success? And all three answered without hesitating, focus. Focus is the key to success. Successful people are focused, and unsuccessful people are not. Successful people focus on one thing, the most important thing, and they complete that task. And unsuccessful people try to do a whole lot of little things, and they get very little done. In fact, we, we say multitasking actually lowers your IQ by 10 points. When you switch, you don't multitask. What you do is you switch from one task to another, and the switching costs are like turning a light or a battery on or off. It drains your mental battery. It actually makes you dumber to try to do several things at once whereas it makes you smarter, more intelligent, and more motivated to focus and concentrate. So thinking is the most important thing that you do. So then the question is, the next question I ask is, what is your most valuable financial asset? 
again, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a, like a trick question. When I first learned it, again, it was to change the direction of my thinking, with your most valuable financial asset is your earning ability. Your earning ability is the most precious thing that you have in the whole world. Your ability to earn money is, or what is the economists call your earning power, is as much as 80 or 90% of all of your value. You could lose your house, your home, your car, your clothes, everything, but as long as you still have your earning power, you could walk back out and start to pump tens of thousands of dollars a year into your life. The big difference between people today is we don't have an income gap, we have a skills gap. And this is University of Chicago Nobel Prize winning stuff. We have a skills gap. And what is the skills gap? Is some people have very high earning power. Is they're very good at what they do and they're getting better at things that are really important that people will pay them for and other people do not. The 80-20 rule applies in states, it applies in society, but the top 20% of people have higher earning power and their earning power is continually increasing. That's why you're coming to a conference like this where you can learn ideas and techniques and get methods that will help you to increase your earning power are very important because it can have an effect on your whole life. You can change the entire quality of your life, the standard of living for your family and so on by upgrading your earning ability. Now what is your earning ability? Your earning ability is your ability to get results that people will pay you for. People will actually give you money for the results. And the most, the turning point in my life when I was 24 years old and I came from a poor family and I labored for years and I got into sales and I struggled in sales. I had holes in my shoes. I, I did not ever miss a meal, but I did postpone quite a few indefinitely. Um, and then I went and asked one of the top salespeople in the company what he was doing differently from me and he told me, and I almost fell off my chair. I didn't realize that sales had a specific logical process. And if you follow the process in order, you make sale after sale, and if you don't, you don't. You know, most professionals today, top professionals, will tell you the same thing that we've been discussing, and that is focus is the number one key to success. Now let's get back to our interview. Uh, Brian, we were talking about, um, I, I kind of looked to you in the early years of, of my career as kind of a mentor along with some of the greats like uh, the, the Zig Ziglar and many others. And, um, but I was curious to know who were some of your mentors coming up uh, that you had studied or that inspired you to take the path you did? Well, uh, I did the same thing you did. I became very aggressive about learning. I remember asking a top salesman for advice. He said, well, have you read any books on sales? I said, are there books on sales? <laughs> and I went down, I remember I went down to the bookstore and went to the sales section and there's two or three rows of books. Today there's about 4,000 books on sales that are still being sold. Well, I remember I bought my first book and I began to read it and it was by a sales manager who would started off in the trenches and worked for 30 years and he wrote down everything he'd ever learned. And I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. And after that I began to buy book after book after book. I read virtually every top sales book over the years. I read hundreds of books and then I got into management. So I began to read every book on management I could find. Peter Drucker had a great influence on me because he was just so practical, right. so important on focusing on creating customers, focusing on satisfying customers, taking care of them, focusing on taking such good care that they buy again uh, and again and recommend you to their friends and so on. And then I got into time management and I realized, oh my lord. Yeah. Time management is de determines whether or not you can use this material. So I studied time management for 10 years. I've got libraries full of time management. Well, I have to tell you personally, time power uh, like saved my life because my biggest thing, and I was one of those entrepreneurs young that you know, people would say, well, I got an opportunity for you, and I never wanted to turn anything down, and I found that I was trying to do all these things, and I picked up time power, and I, went, I must have been through that book a million times. To this day, I still have it in my closet that I pull out every, on a regular basis and uh, certainly helped me along uh, as well. And it, it's, I, I know today that you mentioned about investing in yourself. And yes. it's funny, I never realized how much uh, of your body of work have, has made it over the years actually has become part of our culture. I was having a conversation yesterday, and this was before I even knew uh, I would uh, interview you. and. Uh, 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 there was a show that, that's going to come out called The Appearance Factor, and it's a top doctor that's going to have a, a, a health and wellness show. And we were in a room, and he said, uh, you know, we, we want to get the point across about it's important to invest in yourself. And I actually found myself without realizing, saying, well, you know, Brian Tracy says that, uh, and I was talking to him about, you know, investing in yourself. Right. I know you used to call it 
uh, Automobile University. Yes. Where you're constantly um, investing in yourself education wise. And then I think I remember reading years ago in one of your books something about you know, every dime that you invest in yourself, you get like a dollar back and it's the best investment. You can uh, the, the minimum, if, it's, if you learn something that will help you to get better results, yeah. your payoff can be 10, 20, 30, 50 times. I had one gentleman in my course recently, it makes me happy to think about it, he paid $75 for my course on selling, on CDs. And he said he increased his income the following year by $75,000, his personal income, listening to that program. So what he did, he's got a thousand times. He's paid $75, he got $75,000 back. He said, directly attributable, uh, and, and higher income, he's already doing very well, directly attributable to what he learned in that course. And is that a good payoff? That's uh, an incredible payoff. And, and the other thing is because by practicing these things, he now owns these techniques for the rest of his life. So they continue to pay off year after year. Unbelievable, and uh, I, you know, for the viewers out there that are uh, contemplating, you know, maybe they've been laid off or they've had this vision for many years, and they're saying, um, maybe I want to jump ship and finally pursue my dreams. Uh, any advice you could give our viewers out there that are looking to get all in and, and kind of pursue their career? Well, the, number one is to, is to have a good product or service to start with. The product or service has to be superior to its competition in three ways. It's called the rule of three. It has to be faster, better, cheaper, more convenient, easier to use. And sometimes the very fact that you sell it and you service it yourself can, be, make, can make it different from anybody else's. And second of all, it has to be vigorously sold. It is nothing sells itself in a competitive market. So you've got to be thinking about sales all day long. And then third of all, you've got to take really good care of your customers after they buy. So great product or service in comparison to your competitors. It does something that the customer really wants and needs is willing to pay for. That's number one. Number two is market and sell it all the time. The, the whole essence of business is marketing strategy, attracting customers and converting them to buy. Right. And the third is take such good care of them that they stay with you and buy again and again. Right. Well, that's absolutely great advice. And Brian, I know we, we've talked that you've authored many uh, best-selling books and just amazing body of work. Uh, I think of personally uh, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life or Time Power as we mentioned or Eat That Frog was one of my favorites. Uh, recently you, you did release The Power of Self-Discipline and it's uh, right on the cover, no excuses. Um, what's out next out of Brian Tracy International? What are some of the things we can look forward to? Get our hands on so to speak. Well I'm doing a whole series on management subjects like uh, motivation, how do you motivate your staff? Negotiation, how do you get the best deal every time? Uh, time management, how do you use your time really well, but in a short book? Uh, delegation, how do you delegate to people a critical skill? But also leadership skills, how do you lead, how do you manage, how do you set goals, how do you establish a vision? How do you become a better and better person? Because the rule is this, is your company, business only gets better when you get better. Right. As you, be, as you work on improving yourself on the inside, the, operations and profits of your business increase on the outside. And I heard you make the point uh, just a few moments ago that the one skill set that you're lacking in, uh, or, or I should say that, that your, your best skill set can really set the bar of what your income potential is. Yeah. And I, I suppose that's reversed to the, the, whatever your negative, the things you haven't developed yourself yes. can really. What, 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 what we found, and this is a great breakthrough, is your weakest key skill sets the height of your income. Your weakest key business or sales skill. So you always have to ask this question. If you could wave a magic wand and be absolutely excellent at any one skill overnight, which one skill would help you the most to increase your sales and profitability? Now that is the great question because there's always an answer to it. And you always know the answer. And sometimes you don't like the answer. But you can say, well, if I was really good at marketing, if I could write really good advertising that would attract more and more people, well, it's a learnable skill. You can learn the skill or at the very least, you can hire somebody who already has it. But you've got to be clear what's the one skill that can help you the most to increase your sales and profitability as a business owner. And then focus, focus on developing that skill. Well, I'll tell you, it, it's such a great honor for me uh, to sit here with you, Brian. And when I think of in our generation, you know, the, the, the Earl Nightingales and the Dale Carnegies of our generation, certainly you're uh, the man that comes to mind for me and um, I know that uh, you know we, we've there's probably three or four names uh, recently 
uh, we know that Zig, the great Zig Ziglar passed away. I'm sure you were uh, friends, dear yes, friends with. Yes, friends for many, for decades, for more than 20 years. It was certainly a loss, but um, we appreciate you going strong. Now, I, I did read on your blog, I guess a couple of years ago, you had battled throat cancer that you had yeah, announced yeah. and that you beat it like everything else in your career. So we wish you much continued success uh, with your health and with your career. And go out now and uh, time, uh, the power of self, Discipline, uh, power self-discipline, no excuses. It's available everywhere. Go get this book. Brian Tracy, everybody. Come. Welcome back. Welcome back. You know, we hope you enjoyed our interview with Brian Tracy. And I can't emphasize enough the importance of having extreme focus in our lives. In fact, there's a saying in business that says that if we chase two rabbits, we don't get either. And today, because of financial strain, many entrepreneurs find themselves chasing many rabbits. One reason why focus is so hard today in our society is because things have become so hectic. We have so many places to be and so many things to do. But you know, a recent study showed that out of what consumes our mind on a daily basis, 40% of it is things that have already happened to us in the past that we cannot change. Another 40% of what consumes our minds is speculating on things in the future that are never gonna happen to us. And really only 20% of what we're focusing on are things we should be focusing on. Things that are really gonna move the needle and give us more success. I call this the fog effect. What is the fog effect? Well, have you ever been in a city like San Francisco or Seattle and the fog is so thick you can't see the bumper in front of you? In fact, from an aerial view, if you saw a city with fog 100 feet deep and 10 city blocks, they say the components that would make up all of that fog could actually fit into one cup of water. And really, this is what happens to us as entrepreneurs. We become so busy with life, with dealing with problems, we get so fogged out, we literally can't see the bumper in front of us. Or maybe we can't see the next business deal. Or we start missing simple things in our business that we could normally uh, take care of. It's easy to feel overwhelmed and, well, quite frankly, feel like we're drowning. So again, take Brian's advice. Get up early, evaluate what your 20% is, and get rid of the fog. Get rid of the busy work. And if you find yourself becoming overwhelmed during your day, take a break, split your focus, get energized before coming back to the task. Again, I hope you enjoyed our episode today. And I want to tell you, don't forget to get involved in your local community and be forgiving of others. Good night, everybody. Hi, I'm Dan Vega, and thank you for watching our channel. I want to take a second to tell you about a resource that's helping thousands of people across the country, Blue University. Blue University is the premier online business school for entrepreneurs and business leaders. You know, if you find yourself in a day-to-day -day grind where you've lost your joy or you're just tired of struggling, then check out blue.university. That's B-L-U dot university. I can promise that you receive nothing short of a multi-million dollar education. And if you want a completely different life in three to six months and a way to create wealth in five years or less, then again, check it out. That's blu.university. Find out why blue is the new color of success. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel or to give us a good rating, but that's only if you see value. And when you do receive value, make sure to share it with someone else. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.